Hello everybody. Thank you for joining us. I welcome you all on this exclusive webinar on IoT Internet of Things. It's really good to see so many enthusiastic participants here. I'll do a quick introduction now. I'm Ankita Jain from Apex Global and we have organized this webinar in partnership with Nanocell Networks and we're honored to have its CEO Mr. Devdas Pai as our lead speaker for today. Mr. Devdas has 14 plus years of experience in network planning, configuration, operation, product development, and other similar areas, and has successfully spread his company across the globe in a very short span of time. So I, on behalf of Apex Global team, would like to thank Mr. Devdas for taking out his precious time and share his knowledge on IoT with us. Now let's hear from Mr. Dave Das and learn more about IoT. Over to you, Mr. Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Ankita, for the quick introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience and interest to learn this exciting topic called IoT. My name is Dev Das and uh, I, used to, I have been working in the industry for the last about 15 years now and uh, my interest is basically to learn and share knowledge of new technologies. So IoT is called Internet of Things. Why are we learning now? Basically IoT was there since 50 years but IoT is catching up now in the industry because of various reasons and it's good time for all of us to learn this new topic uh, and uh, it's going to add a lot of value uh, for our day-to-day -day life and it's going to change the way we are going to live probably in the next 15-20 years IoT will change a lot many things so from that perspective, it's very important for all of us to know IoT. So what is IoT? We're going to learn uh, uh, quickly four, four topics here. One is what is IoT and second is applications of IoT. And then we will look at IoT architecture. And, and then we will see what's the future for this industry. I'm going to keep it uh, very generic. I won't talk much on technology. I'll be talking uh, uh, for for next uh, 45 minutes to one hour. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, I request you to ask those questions through the ch chat box that is available to you. And uh, uh, if you can hold on to the questions till the end of the sessions, it will be good. Otherwise, I am absolutely okay even if you want to ask those questions in the in between. So basically, we had internet for human beings till now. We used to access internet either through computer or through mobile phone. And uh, we used to avail lots of services available on internet. So the next wave is basically Internet for Things. That's why it's called IoT, Internet of Things. Wherein we are going to interconnect all and everything available on the earth through Internet. Basically machines can talk to each other. One thing can talk to another via Internet. So which means that uh, Internet is not just limited for human beings going forward. Internet is for, for all the devices, for all things that is surrounding us here. Be it any device, whether it is at home or in the road or in the shopping mall or anywhere, we can expect the things to be connected on Internet, even the electric pole or the, or the signal light or the cars or washing machine or TV or anything, we can expect them to be connected on the internet. So that enables 
many new things, many new ways of living, many, many, many applications are coming out because of this internet of things. So that's why this picture on the screen shows that a lot of things uh, are connected on the internet and that helps us in controlling, monitoring and developing some logics and develop analytics to develop intelligence. When the traffic is not there on the road, why should we have the traffic light? Why should we have street lights? So, it, so that kind of scenarios will come soon. So it's all going to be semi-automatic or rather full automatic system going forward. Let's move forward. So this slide talks about an electronic device generally connected to other device or networks. That means a device is connected to other device or networks via different protocols such as Bluetooth or near field communication or Wi-Fi or any mobile technology that can operate in some extent interactively and autonomously. They can work with each other. A system is giving input to the all the streetlights saying that there is no traffic on this road, you can all switch off. So basically, if we implement such application across the world, the savings are in billions. So that's why every industry is trying to implement IoT though it may save a small percentage in their operational cost or in their capital cost, when we consider it as uh, across the world, it is going to save billions for the industry. So every industry is interested in implementing IoT in whichever space they are. So if we see the evolution of computing, wherein we had the mainframe computers which, which were connected to internet in 1960s. Then we had mini computers in 1980s. And we had desktop PCs in 1990 which were connected to internet and human beings used to access internet through desktop PCs. Now it has come to laptop for la now last 10-15 years. And now we are comfortable using internet on the mobile device. And mobile devices are connected to internet which means now billions of mobile devices are connected to internet so that's not the end if you look at further with the internet of things billions of devices tens of billions of devices will be connected on internet so that is what is the future where the controlling monitoring as I mentioned and various things can be done remotely, can be done automatically by having various conditions. So that is what is happening in the market today. Let us see what happens. Just a quick uh, uh, a slide which talks about, okay, on one side we have a lot of internet of things across the world, all the devices are connected and that data is available on internet and if we make this data available in an easy to consume fashion to anybody and everybody of course security is going to be one of the biggest concerns but uh, it is going to enable a lot of uh, smart applications uh, with respect to what, you, what are your choices if you are an individual, what are the buying behavior and various things it can actually capture. And then people can analyze this data for their own convenience, for their own security and various things. And then finally it allows everybody to have control on the things that they want. For example, we all go to office and we would like to have control on all the devices that is there at home. I would like to switch off the geyser, I would like to switch on my washing machine during afternoon time when the electricity per unit price is very low. There could be many reasons that you may want to control lots of devices at home when you are at office. That's possible if we are having 
an access for all these devices through a common uh, platform which is called internet. The only thing that we will see is that going forward all these devices, any device that is generally what I read in the market uh, in the internet is that okay, if any device costs more than hundred dollars, they are enabled for internet. That means they will have computing power, they will have some processing power, they will have some sensors, they will have a lot of uh, uh, intelligence built into it depending on what they are doing. So finally we, it will allow us to control monitoring of things remotely. So this is what is going to happen and the biggest challenge is connectivity of all these devices. It is absolutely impossible have connectivity for all the things that is surrounded by us through wired medium. We should go for wireless medium and depending on their communication range and what kind of data they transmit, we may use different kinds of wireless technologies for uh, uh, communication with each other. So the world is going to be quite interesting going forward and there are in the industry there are some names that are used for IOT. You may see some of the organizations using name called IOE, Internet of Everything or some people may refer to this as machine to machine communication. M to M they refer in some industry. Internet of everything is basically giving complete picture or idea but the name itself is telling me everything. So the web of things, connected environment, pervasive internet, wireless sensor networks or some people may call it as physical internet cyber physical system. So there are various terminologies used in the industry. Ultimately all of them are referring to IOT. So how IOT will change the world? Basically if you see this picture we get to know. Some we get to know something from this. Today if a car gets breakdown, so there is only a corrective mechanism that is available wherein once the breakdown happens we will notice it or we will experience it and then we will call the garage or we will call some maintenance guys to come and fix the problem. So what we are seeing with the internet of things going forward will be that all the cars can be monitored from a central location. Their engine performance, their uh, the the tire and various things uh, that can be monitored from a central location if car is able to communicate and send data regularly. Basically the car will be connected through wireless to a central platform where the data can be captured and uh, the sensors, we already have some things implemented in the car. The sensors uh, can tell me whether the tire is getting flat, the air is low, in the air pressure is low in the tire. So various things can be uh, displayed on the on the dashboard. And uh, I see some of the implementations uh, or some plans wherein uh, the quality of the diesel or the petrol that we fill to the tank can be also monitored on the dashboard uh, using some IOT mechanism that they may use. So ultimately our cars will be connected on the internet and based on certain criteria, based on certain sensing technique, it can sense something going bad or it can sense okay the engine is getting heated and then it can communicate to the central station uh, and then we can have a immediate reaction or we can have an immediate remedy given to the driver uh, who is driving that car and we can inform him that okay car is about to get breakdown. So there are various things like that. So if you look at the second picture, gas utility companies need to ensure pipelines do not have leakage or it does not burst. So they generally go through helicopter today to see where the leakage is, where the burst is. 
rather with iot it may happen that okay they will have a sensor which flow through the pipelines and it can detect where the gas is emitting and the faults can be remotely monitored sitting in a location so the important factor here is one is sensor who senses certain things we can define those criteria what they should report and when they should report and how they should report can be defined in the sensor and the sensors must be able to communicate to the central monitoring station that communication is also an important aspect of iot without that communication it is not possible to have a remote monitoring or a controlling mechanism and it's also that okay there might be so many sensors we may not want to have all sensors talking to the central station one to one rather i may have a gateway in between where all the sensors are connected and the gateway is communicating to the the remote uh, server or a platform where people are monitoring so there are a lot of benefits like this that can be achieved through iot these are just couple of examples for example uh, if a pregnant woman does not have let's say if she does not have the doctor facility nearby if she has to travel long distance to check the status health condition of uh, the fetus so then uh, it becomes a, a, a painful journey for them to go regularly to the doctor and come back with iot you may have a device which is fixed to the body of the pregnant woman around the neck or something which will continuously monitor the uh, status of fetus and uh, heart rate and various things and that uh, the wearable device can communicate to the mobile device that is there with the, most of the people now with everybody and that mobile device will communicate to the doctor saying that okay it's all basically through mobile applications which collects the data from the wearable device worn by the pregnant woman and then uh, it is being the details are given to the doctor and doctor can actually give his feedback again on online and say that everything is all right which completely eliminates the travel and various things so we can imagine these things now or some in some places some trials are going on probably 10 years down the line we see this as a reality or uh, already all organizations are investing big uh, in this space where which may uh, change the way we live as i mentioned earlier and also if you see the fourth picture on the right hand side corner it is difficult for residents to check security of their homes when they are away or detect intrusion so if i have a webcam which is focusing on my house and we, and this webcam is connected to the internet now i can access the webcam from anywhere and see what's going on and also we can have a robot in the home which uh, which is controlled through a smartphone will go all over the place and it will uh, will be streaming back the live footage so this is just couple of applications that i am showing here which is going to actually uh, basically bring lot of changes uh, in the way we live as i mentioned before this is another example very traditional example, very uh, normal example that uh, people talk in iot a coke distribution uh, vehicle takes takes you through a route in a regular interval of time distribution doesn't check the stock available in the shops it doesn't check the weather conditions or natural calamities that may happen on that particular area or uh, it may not check whether the shop is closed currently so the coke van uh, distribution van just takes a particular route uh, and it will go to the shop and then realize certain things which which will be an inefficient system so what happens is basically if you see on the right side coke availability not required the store might be closed and various things with iot implementation by having sensors 
in the refrigerator by having sensors on the door the, by having sensors on the road basically there are sensors sensors are going to be very very important component of iot the sen and the sensor must communicate to the central database that is also an important thing so it's not just enough if we have a sensor so basically if you see the if the door is if the shop is closed it is actually communicating to the central database saying that the shop is closed if the coke can is removed from the refrigerator it is communicating that okay cans are get uh, basically are getting sold so it is getting empty so if there is a landslide we will get to know in this route there is already a landslide where the vehicle cannot go so it helps uh, in a large distribution system it helps the organization to efficiently plan the distribution system for the next day or for the next hour so it, it is all possible because there is the communicating mechanism from things not from people so uh, that's going to be very interesting uh, from various aspects so let's see uh, so we had uh, some technologies called m2m where machines were communicating with other machine with the direct communication basically the other systems will not know what the machine is coming communicating so basically it is a one to one connectivity in m to m but uh, with iot it's basically a, through a platform all devices are connected basically the idea is that let's say if you are coming by a car uh, and and you park in the parking slot there is an indication at home saying that okay you must open the door in next 3 minutes and once the door is open the ac should come to know that okay the person is entering and the ac should switch on automatically so this can happen if all of them are communicating through a common source common platform the car is communicating to a common platform the door is communicating to a common platform the person is communicating to a common platform and this common platform is enabling all the devices to connect with each other so if that can happen then many things can be derived from the common platform because it's going to collect a lot of data and probably the next day it starts opening the door at 6 o'clock because it knows the pattern if you do it for continuously for 5 days it knows the pattern so based on that uh, even the this data can go to a courier guy and the courier guy knows that okay this guy comes only at 6 o'clock every day so let, we should not go there so instead of he coming and going back so there are lot of benefits of having this data in a central location where people can derive intelligence from the data so it's going to be quite interesting analytics as well as the data is going to be a big data so big data analytics is going to play a very critical role in the success of iot so the basically connecting devices is one part gathering data and generating intelligence out of this data for the benefit of everybody is going to be a major uh, factor in in the success of internet of things so let me move to the next slide couple of applications detailed applications that is there i hope uh, you all got some idea of how the iot is going to be and what is iot and we will see many more applications this is a smart chair this is smart chair which can basically do lot of things and then communicate to the doctor and various uh, uh, for the various purpose it can also communicate to the insurance agent ultimately this chair is communicating and providing inputs to the central database from there any you would like to have this data can capture it once this chair can provide uh, the warning message for the wrong posture that you sit this can also go to your orthopedician who is going to actually treat you for the back pain saying that your postures are wrong because the chair is 
connected to the internet. That's, remember, we mentioned that everything will be connected to the internet. So this chair can adjust according to, to your the spine, right? It prompts exercise after long sitting periods. We know that many people working in IT, they have to sit and work and they should take regular break to maintain the body and maintain the health and various things. So this chair can prompt, you can program it and uh, this can be programmed for via internet as well, depending on who sits on this chair, depending on their health condition. So it tracks movement and detects stress and it can communicate to the doctor and uh, this can be an input to the insurance organization who is going to look at your health condition and they know that okay he is a stressful guy the chances of certain emergencies or certain things can go up so your premium for next year can go up. So basically this data is going to communicate, uh, uh, going to be used by many many authorities or various organizations for their own purpose. It measures the weight and detects dehydration it can probably the moment the dehydration is detected it can send a message to, to the, um, the water boy who is going to gen, give you the water or whatever for various things or the shops who are selling the water saying that okay this guy needs water so there are a lot of things the ultimate thing is that all the data is logged in the cloud basically all this data is logged in the cloud where they can get to know your day-to-day -day pattern. This is, there is various things like this and uh, smart suitcase. The moment I book my ticket on the internet, my air ticket, the internet is communicating to the suitcase saying that this guy is traveling US and the internet is also capturing the current weather condition and it is communicating, communicating to the suitcase uh, saying okay what should be packed that means by the time you open the suitcase uh, and see on the front panel it is all mentioning please put sweater please put jacket and various things and it is also uh, communicating uh, what needs to be packed if you are traveling US you are a vegetarian it has collected all the data so digitally controlled lock a GPS location tracking, no more waiting at the at the belt in the airport, uh, how long it will take to get my bag, you can track the bag, so because your mobile phone and uh, is also connected to internet, your bag is also connected to internet, so you can track the location, GPS enabled, so trip tracking, where exactly it is, it is at the transit, whether it is so there are lots of things uh, as we see that um, anything that we can imagine with the IoT, I think that will be possible going forward. Only thing is at what cost we are going to achieve it and what benefit we are going to get is also a return on investment is also a challenge or uh, it's also going to be a very tricky situation with such kind of implementation. So there are a lot of uh, uh, tips or the smart suitcase can do. So can these be things be smart? Basically tennis racket and chopsticks. The chopstick will capture the data of whether it is currently the hot. It can give you a beep on your phone. The moment you put the chopstick on the noodles it can tell you the spice level. It can tell you how much calorie it is and uh, it is and the moment you say no, it is too too hot to have or it is so then it is going to capture okay this person so eating habit is like this he eats faster he eats slower so when so this data uh, basically is communicated from the chopstick to your mobile or various things and then this data is available on the internet next time when you go to the hotel the restaurant guy already knows okay this guy cannot eat hot food this guy prefers to have a uh, very low spicy food and various things and he is very health conscious, he doesn't eat calorie, high calorie foods. So the chopstick can be intelligent going forward and be connected on the internet. So 
it is uh, it's basically left to our imagination what can happen in future. So the tennis racket is also capturing the speed at which you hit the ball. The tennis racket is also sensing that okay the the uh, bat is going bad or something is got cut. Uh, and uh, at, uh, at what angle you hit and various things it is going to capture which is uh, which will be available on the internet and people can uh, see and understand how you play what are your weak points what are your strong points and various things it can measure and the tennis racket can also understand your humidity level your uh, what is you because you are holding the racket so various things it can sense from your hand and uh, it can sense a lot of things from the sweat and it can communicate to the doctor saying that okay he is actually getting dehydrated he's his uh, when he runs at this fast uh, this this speed he's uh, having his blood pressure is like this and various data it will capture so it's going to be very interesting how to analyze this data that's why we are talking about big data in a in a big way today because big data will capture all the information but what are all those useful information, how to analyze this data, how do I develop intelligence out of it and what I am going to derive out of it is also very important uh, uh, aspect of IoT. So typical verticals where IoT is applicable, agriculture. We can check the soil level, the current, uh, the quality of the soil, water level and various things so that I will know whether I should uh, irrigate or whether I should put some extra uh, artificial fertilizers to the mud or to the soil or not I can monitor if the soil is already capable of handling uh, whatever that is required why should I put extra water or various things so it's going to have a big impact on agriculture basically sensors must be implemented everywhere the right kind of sensor depending on the application that we are going to use so in the education space, they can have uh, automated classroom attendance, various things, right? So people are talking about uh, having sensors even in the apparel. So the shirt that I wear, it is going to, uh, from my sweat, it's going to measure my blood sugar level and various things and communicate. So it is uh, going to impact every, have an impact on every industry. So it can impact uh, uh, and have major impact on power because power transmission, power loss, where exactly it is happening from the source of uh, uh, generation till the distribution point, lots of power is being uh, uh, wasted uh, in the transmission because of the transmission loss or power theft is happening, people are taking the power in between. So we can have sensors and understand okay where exactly things are going wrong so there are lots of benefits even for the power and utility plumbing where the uh, water leakage is in the huge uh, condominium so we may have uh, leakage in particular location in the water pipe which is coming inside the building so we don't know where exactly is the leakage ultimately all the floors are uh, having some wet wall or wet uh, roof so where exactly is the leakage if you implement sensors at regular location on the water pipe you can understand where exactly is the leakage happening you don't have to break the whole wall and understand right so there are various things like that even in transport system they are going to uh, easily locate where the truck is where exactly whether it is currently stopping whether it is currently uh, uh, traveling at what speed you can all monitor this so one of the interesting facts that okay if you don't wear the car belt Anyway, today if, if you don't wear the car belt, it is giving you a beep sound. It is sensing that okay, you didn't wear the car belt. So it is giving you a beep sound and it is, uh, uh, and you in reaction to it, you wear the car belt. But uh, going forward with IoT enabled car, it's also going to communicate this. And insurance, insurance, uh, insurance agents are going to use this, saying that you drive car, are uh, uh, without the belt so the possibility of accident and you dying is higher than compared to somebody else who drives the car with the belt and other things so the premium will be higher for such people and uh, we can also analyze the 
pattern. You can also analyze the pattern. There is a question here. So if you have uh, any questions, you can also mention in the chat box there. I would be happy to answer if I know. So, so it's going to happen in many ways in automation, in supply chain, in telecom. It's basically going to give us lots of things at our fingertips. Ultimately, why it is happening now because of the smartphone. Smartphone can have all the applications. Smartphone is no more for only voice communication. Now, uh, the kind of applications that we can have on the smartphone is that we can locate the cab, we can book the cab, we know to reach my place. It's all through devices are communicating. I don't call the cab driver, taxi driver. I don't ask him how long it takes. My mobile application shows me where is the driver, what is his contact number, how far he, he is from this place and how long it takes for him to reach this place. Everything is going to happen just on my fingertips now. So I just look at my phone and do this. So the smartphone is one, one major uh, uh, factor for enabling IoT industry. So telecom is going to play a big role. So typical verticals where IoT can be applied, okay, supply chain, automation, healthcare, big way in healthcare. So wearable devices uh, that we wear, it tracks uh, how many steps I walk per day, it tracks how many calories I have burnt. So various things which can be used to provide data to the doctor uh, and see that, okay, what is your, the pattern and various things it can in healthcare segment, lot of benefits with IoT, oil and gas as we spoke, uh, gas leakage and various things. And security, in security area also where we can today, you know, if anything happens, we are going to capture the data from uh, the camera uh, which is uh, monitoring particular location and this camera is uh, basically recording all the information but uh, the live uh, relay of what camera is capturing is not available. So I can, if the camera is connected through internet, uh, I can have the live coverage of what's going on in a particular location. So I can monitor, for example, individualization of examination center. I don't need to be present physically there. I can monitor from remote location and see what's going on inside the class and various things. So for the security reason, we can use the IoT, ATM monitoring and various uh, other applications in the security space. Home automation. Home automation is, a, is going on in a big way already. Lots of uh, new projects that are coming. Uh, my uh, uh, basically my TV can uh, switch off and switch on based on the whether people are there in the living room. If people are not there, it can automatically switch off, and uh, it can also keep the pattern. Say that okay, every day after coming from office, the first channel he switches on is BBC. So next day when you come and in, stand in front of TV, TV switches off on its own, switches on its own, and as well as the BBC channel is. Uh, is actually broadcasted to you. So if people are not there, it will switch off on its own. Similarly, light, as I walk inside my home, I don't have to switch off and switch on through the, the switch. So it generates, it, it detects, it senses, okay, there are people going here, let me switch on the light. If people are not there, let me switch off the light. Similarly, it can monitor the, the humidity and uh, temperature and it can decide whether to uh, whether to switch on the cooler or the heater so or at what temperature the house has to be maintained so various uh, benefits because of this I switch on the geyser and forget to switch off and uh, it consumes unnecessary power now I can have an uh, implementation on the geyser which senses the temperature of the water and automatically switches off uh, I can generate, uh, I can have application on my phone which can, which can access the geyser and switch off, so, uh, switch off the geyser when I go out, also out of the home. So there are various uh, applications that are possible inside the home. 
right? So uh, that is a smart home concept. Uh, even the doors, for everywhere you can have a digital lock for the door and uh, uh, you can implement uh, smart windows as well, when to open the window, when to close the window. Basically sensors must be there and sensors must communicate with the central device and these things have to be implemented on a platform. So automation, automating at home as we talked access control to home and lighting control and the connected appliances, the refrigerator and the microwave oven can talk to each other. When I remove the food from uh, my uh, refrigerator and keep it in microwave oven, the refrigerator itself is talking to microwave oven what food it is at what temperature you have to heat it and uh, till how long you have to heat it. So the individual need not do anything. So that is a connected appliances, smoke detector and uh, fire extinguisher are interconnected on the internet. Basically, if the smoke gets detected, a uh, fire extinguisher get, can automatically start uh, el eliminating this fire. So, sense of water control because you can have a sensor on the water tank uh, which tells the quality of the water. So, it gives you an indication saying that what kind of water that is being the uh, uh, coming on your water tap in your home. So today you guess okay water we smell what we smell is so you think okay something has gone wrong. Instead of that you can have a sensor which can communicate okay you now the water uh, purification for where everything there is a criteria which can be defined in the sensor and uh, if that that trigger gets met and the sensor will communicate through a platform and it is being that message goes to all the uh, homes that is in, in which is part of that building, apartment or whatever. Smart watering as I mentioned, I don't have to water the plant every day. I can monitor the water level and I can uh, monitor uh, the soil uh, and understand whether the water is required or not. We can also have pet tracking. If you can put a wearable device on the, on the, uh, on the neck of the pet, you can uh, track the pet anywhere. You don't have to go behind it and you can you can find out where exactly is the pet currently because the wearable device is connected on the internet and you can track that. So there are various applications like this. Ultimately this picture shows on the mobile there are so many applications on the mobile when the milk is not there in the refrigerator you get a notification on the mobile saying that milk is absent bring the mobile. That means you are coming from office you uh, you coming from office and uh, it is showing you bring the milk, right? Because the refrigerator is communicating to the mobile app. Similarly, toast is ready. As I mentioned, the geyser, which is communicating to me saying that the water is at 150 degree per night. So various things can be communicated. Uh, or you can uh, connect your mobile and laptop uh, and uh, connect your uh, mobile and TV and certain shows that are coming on the TV you want to record. Uh, you are not at home. So you can uh, connect with your TV from your mobile. You are at office and the TV is at home and you can enable recording on the TV saying that this show from this time to this time you want to record the session. Or also you can once you come home from the TV you can transfer the recorded session to your mobile also. So there can be a communication between device, communication through a platform, various things. So these are all possible. A smart farming. So irrigation, smart irrigation is one thing. You just uh, enable it and uh, based on certain conditions only you irrigate. Livestock tracking of uh, uh, the cattle uh, who, who went on grazing, right? So we can, we need not search anymore where exactly it is, whether it is eating, what kind of uh, uh, grass, the area where it is currently, is there a, is there a bacteria or is there a water logged in that area. So various things that can be monitored uh, using the sensor network. Right, I have another 15 minutes to go. Um, I'll quickly go through, there are a lot many things that uh, we can talk about uh, implementation of IoT or IoT application. In the agriculture field they use, as I mentioned, 
ultimately there are a couple of components that are important irrespective of where I am going to implement IoT. That is, a, that is sensor, connectivity, platform, big data, cloud and analytics. So these are the major components of an IoT network. Um, so this particular, this particular uh, picture shows that okay, the owner is able to get the data from different sites, site two, site three, and currently what is going on, what is exactly is happening there. You can sensor is communicating to the gateway, and gateway is further communicating to the cloud, and from the cloud, the it is available on the mobile. What is currently going on? Whether you are going, you are on travel, and you have asked, you have given a particular task to an individual to water the plant every day. So uh, you will come to know by monitoring the uh, soil whether it is watered every day or uh, whether it is not. So you can measure the water content in the soil. So you can see that okay on everyday basis you can see the water content in the soil and then decide okay uh, it is being uh, watered every day. That is one of the examples that I can take. There are many applications like this uh, which can be used. Ultimately what sensors, what you want to sense and how it has to be communicated is to be important. So elements of IoT enabled farming as I mentioned uh, you can uh, monitor the soil and understand what grade of the soil it is and what has to be implemented. So I will move forward fast because there are lots of things that we have uh, to cover in this demo session. Real-time monitoring from the, from the field uh, till it gets distributed to the last point. Whether the particular item from the field is distributed with the, what temperature, you can, you can monitor that. Basically, the, whether the truck driver is stopping somewhere and the truck driver says, okay, something has gone faulty, is it true? You can all monitor this because connected vehicles, these are all connected vehicles, you can understand. So you can do assets management. Basically, if the, if uh, vegetables are not sold in the market, there is no point in cutting those vegetables in the field. Rather, you allow them to grow. So you will come to know the current uh, stock level and see whether you have to Trans whether you have to transport further vegetables or you have to leave it. So all that uh, can be monitored uh, from the central location and the farmer can decide should he take the next crop or should he leave it like that or should he wait for one more day to cut because these perishable goods, it's very important at what time I'm going to cut them and how quickly it is needed in the market. Otherwise you don't take it out from the, pluck it out from the uh, from the trees, right? So I need to have sensors in all these places uh, which can sense particular condition and develop information. So automotive, automotive as I mentioned, navigation, proximity sensors, the vehicle can sense uh, people walking in front of it, vehicles besides it, vehicles in, in front of it. Uh, so by sensing what next, basically it can uh, say it can guide the vehicle whether to go slow, whether to stop, whether to take left, whether to take right and uh, uh, and it can sense uh, one kilometer from here currently whether it is whether we have uh, a traffic jam so that you can take an alternate route in the next signal, next traffic light. So currently the traffic lights don't give us input about how the traffic condition is in the next signal. So we just drive and go and get stuck in the next signal. Instead of that, all these traffic uh, poles are communicating with each other and it is telling uh, in the previous traffic light itself that uh, the traffic condition is bad and uh, 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 so you have to take, you better take a deviation at this place itself. So it can basically have lots of implications. So uh, that's the reason Google self-driving car, you have this new Mercedes which is try, trying it out. So we don't need a driver which is going to create, have, bring a lot of efficiencies in the way we travel. So banking and finance, you can uh, detect the frauds, you can, the way you pay the money. So uh, we are all now having more 
mobile wallet mobile wallet can uh, can actually transfer money from mobile one application to another application so asset recovery various things i can monitor basically uh, insurance guys can uh, monitor the usage of the car if you are keep if you have not used the car for one year when you renew the in, when you go for renewal so the usage pattern is known to the insurance guys and the premium can be based on the usage so there are a lot of things that can be implemented uh, in iot so it's in education space as i said automated classroom attendance they can detect where the particular file is you go, go back to your school and say i need this particular certificate so instead of go and searching in the rack everything has a sensor enabled system you can clearly uh, locate where exactly is the file so these are all some of the applications in education space you can have smart classes you can uh, deliver uh, a particular class online these are all the applications of iot as i said energy and utility smart metering smart metering uh, can be done you can have a uh, reading machine connected to the electric meter which is going to communicate after every month to a central database and you generate the bill and uh, and the the mesh, machine is also communicating to the individual saying that okay this is the amount of bill you got on your applications and and uh, your credit card companies can immediately uh, give you a pop up message saying that do you want to pay the bill because everybody is connected on a common platform so uh, your mobile is connected on internet your electric meter is connected on internet and your banking is on internet so all things can be put together and develop intelligence so there are a lot of things like this that can be done so water level monitoring as i mentioned in the soil you can monitor water level also in the tank a lot of water gets wasted because people switch on the motor and the tank gets filled and uh, it overflows so if you have a sensor the sensor can communicate to, to the automated switch off switch on button the sensor says okay water level is now full and you switch off the uh, motor so you can remotely uh, switch off and switch on the motor once the water level goes down once the water level goes uh, crosses the threshold value so this can be also implemented in iot in healthcare as i mentioned now there is a pill cam which is if you take a pill it can the pill has a camera inside it and it can flow through your entire digestive system and it can monitor ulcer you can avoid endoscopy you can avoid uh, colonoscopy and all this and uh, this pill, pill is iot enabled which is taking the picture of internal uh, system and communicating it to the doctor so if i am re remotely available and there is a specialist doctor who is there somewhere and i can just swallow this pill and this pill is capturing the picture and and it is communicating to the nearby mobile and the mobile is capturing this data and communicating it to the internet and the, the doctor is available on the internet he captures this picture and he looks at it and he can prescribe medicine so pill reminders remote monitoring of health now we all are a uh, little bit more comfortable with remote monitoring so there are a lot of uh, applications that are possible in uh, personal uh, care as well as health care in doctors in hospital so various things so i will move forward quickly in the environment you can monitor air quality sensors air quality sensors can tell you uh, whether the air what we are breathing correctly is polluted or not so that you can take an appropriate action whether you have to wear the mask or not so analyze the river water for pollutants flood tracking mechanism forest fire detection you can have sensors everywhere in the forest to detect the uh, forest fire and uh, it can communicate to, to the fire engine and it can say that okay there is a uh, fire in this forest so instead of a reactive mechanism it, can, it is going to bring lot of proactive mechanisms in the system tracking wildlife and various things are possible so so basically uh, there are now uh, smart cities coming up smart cities smart cities are going to be completely iot enabled uh, which is going to 
uh, have traffic based on smart IoT, uh, lightings uh, on the streets are going to be based on IoT. So everything is going to be based on IoT. Uh, the lightings will switch on only uh, if it is uh, certain uh, type of uh, light that is there in the summer season. Lighting need not be on at in the evening 5 o'clock. Probably in the winter or in the cloudy season, the lighting can be on at 5 o'clock. So it's all going to be uh, based on sensors, which is going to switch on and switch off. So what? So next, so commercial IoT applications, smart thermostats, Nest is one uh, which is going to detect the humidity level at home. Uh, what is the general temperature people maintain at different homes? It's going to going to communicate to the cloud, which is going to derive a lot of information. So it can monitor the temperature, humidity level at home, and uh, these things. Smart thermostats. Nest is acquired by Google. So connected car, as I mentioned. So we can monitor the car performance and uh, remotely. Then we have activity trackers, the third item, which can, which is a wearable device, which monitors uh, how much jogging you have done, how much calorie you have uh, uh, you are uh, burnt, and it can also from your sweat, it can measure blood pressure and blood blood sugar, and it can communicate to uh, your mobile device, and the mobile device can talk to the doctor. Automatically, your doctor gets a report from your uh, uh, activity tracker and uh, we have smart outlets which is a power outlet where you can switch off this outlet uh, this particular plug point uh, from remotely you can switch off and switch on through Wi-Fi or any communication mechanism so that you will have control on all electrical systems that are connected to these plug points parking sensors we will know while getting inside the building itself, we will know which parking slot is free, which parking slot is full, because there are our sensors which are going to sense whether the vehicles are parked or it's empty. So we have seen these systems already. So Internet of Things application scenario we have discussed. Basically, office is connected on internet, whole home is connected on internet, malls are connected on internet. In the mall, they can track what is the behavior of a particular consumer, what is this buying behavior, purchasing trend in the mall, what, where he spends maximum time. So various things can be tracked in the mall and in the airport and various things, right? In the outdoor, we can monitor the traffic. All so ultimately, everything is available on internet. As we said, smart homes. Yeah, I will quickly move to another five ten minutes. IoT architecture. So. We got some idea of IoT application. So what are the important components of IoT? So if you look at the first picture here, this is the traditional wherein uh, all devices are communicating to a central device and uh, it is communicating to a central processor. The devices are not communicating with each other at all. But today with Internet of Things, if we see the picture here, with Internet of Things, the devices are also capable of communicating with each other so that there can be control locally instead of going back and forth. The devices are able to generate some uh, uh, intelligence and have a control on each other. And then they are communicating to the uh, pl cloud platform. So important components, one is sensor. A sensor also senses certain things and communicates. Also, if you want the sensors to react, Let's say smoke sensor, uh, it is only sensing and giving you. But if, if you are expecting so smoke sensor to uh, have uh, some reactive mechanism to uh, take away the fire that is there, you can ha re have the reactive approach also. Uh, so sensors can act in two ways. It can sense and it can also react. So the connectivity is very important from the sensor. The platforms to connect multiple sensors and ultimately analytics, developing the intelligence out of this data and have an application which runs on the phone to control this. So there are five major components in the IoT. One is sensor, second is connectivity, third is platform, third is analytics, fourth is application. Analytics where we are talking about big data, Hadoop and everything and run the analytics on it and then have applications based on that, right? So IoT components as I mentioned, sensors, how it is connected. Sensors are connected to gateways using low power because sensors are not having a power supply that we have for other system. 
sensors must work on battery and the sensors communication module uh, or the com radio, the transmitter and receivers that is there in the sensor must be low power transmission because the, it is working on a battery and battery should give you long lasting lifetime for the sensor. We cannot go and uh, change the battery every now and then. So they use a very, very low power uh, radios on the sensor which is uh, Bluetooth low energy, thread, Zigbee, six slope and the various uh, uh, wireless communication technologies that are available for the sensors to communicate with gateway. Then gateway can connect to internet using Wi-Fi or cellular or uh, it can have a broadband connection, fiber and various things. Ultimately sensors are the ones who are communicating with the low power wireless connectivity. So it's going to talk, it's actually talking the same thing in a in the network diagram architecture. So smartphone is the one who is going to have the control on all the device. It's going to act as a gateway. Smartphone is going to act as a gateway because there are lot many sensors surrounding me. The watch is having a sensor of weather and it is communicating to my mobile. My blood pressure and blood sugar is measured through my sweat through a wearable device. It is also going to communicate to my mobile which is in the pocket and my mobile is charged every day through a charging, right? So mobile can communicate with the internet. So mobile is going to act as a, uh, act as a uh, platform. So mobile will also work on cellular, mobile will have Wi-Fi, mobile will have these low transmit power radios to communicate with sensors. So these are all the different wireless technologies that are available. LTE uh, in, in, for the IoT to, uh, for IoT implementation, we have various wireless technologies, uh, wireless technologies on the mobile side and wireless technologies for the mobiles to communicate with the, the sensors. There are six low pan, uh, um, Bluetooth low energy and these things, Zigbee and other, other communication uh, technologies that are available. Why IoT now? This is a big question. Why not in the, one is sheer reason because today we have smartphones. Second, we have cloud computing. We have uh, lots of uh, license free open standard protocols for implementation cost of sensors. So the advancement in, uh, in manufacturing sensors, the price has gone so low that today at one dollar you can buy a sensor. So dropping cost of electronics, so availability of open source devices, availability of uh, uh, Wi-Fi kind of wireless technologies which are free for communication because Wi-Fi does not need license. It is using unlicensed spectrum. So all these are actually driving IoT. If we didn't have a, a affordable wireless technology, IoT would not have been there. If we didn't have smartphone, IoT would not have been there. If we didn't have a, a centralized database, which is called cloud, uh, cloud computing, if, then IoT would not have been there. So the reason for IoT now is basically, this is the right time for the industry to take IoT to next stage. So role of IP networking, all things are based on IP because the internet works mainly based on IP. So you will see all the devices are connected through IP networking. So I will move forward fast, uh, talk about industry a little bit. So factors for choosing the, sen choosing the sensor, we can, based on what the sensors must do, we have to decide what sensor we want. So ultimately, who are driving this? Apple wants to drive it. So Apple has a Alliance Apple Home Kit. Uh, Google wants to drive it. Google has a, uh, a platform called Thread. Then there is All Scene, which is driven by Qualcomm. So there is no particular standard as of now for IoT. So there are major companies who are driving this because lots of processing in all the devices and everybody wants to have their processor. So Intel wants to have their processor probably Qualcomm wants to have their uh, trademark on IoT, they want to drive it. So Apple wants to drive it. So all these uh, major organizations are having their own alliances and trying to connect all these devices and implement uh, processing power in all the devices. So there is no one standardizing body as of now for IoT. Quickly IoT industry, see as I mentioned, average sensor cost is going to very, very low price. 
since 2004 to 2020, we see it is almost uh, one fifth of the cost of sensor for the same sensor. So it makes now because return on investment is a big thing. So when we implement IoT, it's all going to be a capital investment. So we have to look at the usage and the return on investment. So if you look at the market trends for IoT, in 2003, number of connected devices, that means connected devices on the internet were 500 million compared to 6.3 billion people. Uh, these are all the data that is taken out from uh, web website. If you see 2015, currently where we are, there are 7.2 billion people and 25 billion devices are connected. And uh, by 2020, the prediction is, estimation is that there will be 7.6 billion people and there will be 50 billion devices connected on the internet. That means uh, it's almost about 8 to 9 times the human being, uh, 7, eight, 7 to 8 times of the human being that so devices are connected on the internet and we can imagine the kind of traffic flowing on a communication network from the device to device and kind of data that has to be uh, analyzed uh, on the platform so this is going to give this is only showing how m2m -M connections are moving in in upward direction from 2013 to 2018 connected tvs connected pcs other portable devices so all components, TV, smartphone, and only um, uh, basically non-smartphones, non-smartphones are actually are uh, having a negative growth. The otherwise everything is having a positive growth because they are all connected devices. Sensor shipment for wearable device. If you track sensors, uh, sensors shipment. 2012 we had around 50 million sensor shipment. Today, sensor shipment has gone to 200 million, close to 200 million. And by 2019, we are going to look at about 500 million or 450 million sensor shipment for various purposes. That means uh, it's about nine times from 2012 to 2019. If the sensors are getting shipped, it means that the IoT is going, IoT industry is implementing various uh, applications in the industry because sensors are the key points of IoT. So these are all some numbers. How big is the market for connected people? Four billion dollars, four trillion dollars revenue opportunity. Twenty-five million apps, four billion people connected, four trillion revenue opportunity. Twenty-five plus million apps. 25 plus billion embedded intelligent systems and 50 trillion GBs of data. That is the kind of data that we need to handle. 50 trillion gigabits of data by 2020. So if we see everything is on upwards and uh, military, medical, these different color legends are showing how the industry, Internet of Things is growing from, from 2011 to 2025. It's only on the Side, right? And there are three waves in M2M, which is generally networked consumer electronics, and the second wave is networked industries, and the third wave is networked everything, networked society. Initially, was only networked consumer electronics, then talking about networking, and ultimately we are talking about networked everything and networked society. That is going to improve the human efficiency. So expectations, if you look at some percentages here, every market overall, North American, Europe, and Asia Pacific, all of them have said that on an average, about 40% of the people have said that there will be major impact with IoT. Basically, that this is what is shown. About 40% people have said there will be major impact. Some impact, again, some people have said 40%. There are only very less people who have believed that IoT is not going to bring change. That means that is only about 15%. So about 80% have said that, okay, IoT is going to bring a lot of change. So, so what? This is one very good important information which says that, okay, there is a big saving, even if we talk about 1% saving uh, in IoT uh, by implementing IoT, estimated cost savings in five industries over a period of 15 years will be $30 billion in jet fuel. Just by implementing IoT over a period of time, we can have $30 billion. 
if this, uh, this is basically from the data that is taken from GE, there will be 27 billion dollar uh, saving in the system inefficiencies in tra transport system. In the power sector, there will be 66 billion saving gas generation efficiency through gas generation efficiency. Like this, you can see in every oil and gas, 90 billion dollar saving. And we are talking about only 1% saving. That means the kind of impact, even if it improves the efficiency by 1%, even if it improves the whole system by 1%, it's going to save billions of dollars for the industry, which is capital in intensive industry. So, ultimately there is a big ROI. We see uh, lots of ROI uh, from all these industries, low cost via converged networks, worker productivity in the factory, you can monitor. It's all going to be big data and analytics. That is going to be very, very important part, part in IoT. So these are all talking about IoT, uh, benefits of IoT with respect to ROI, improved customer service, increased productivity, everything is going to improve. One bar is showing without it, one bar is showing with it. Consistency in service, so the 33% gray revenue, the so chances are 34% from current 28%. So customer service also will improve. Lots of things can be done. So basically ROI, time to ROI, right? Six months it will give 24% return on investment. In one year, 65%. In five years, it can give 100% ROI if we implement IoT. That's what is the is the scenario. So that means IoT is going to have a clear clear, clear uh, ROI for uh, industry. So this picture shows, okay, uh, there are a lot of companies that got acquired who are working in IoT space. Google and Qualcomm acquiring CSR, Apple has acquired a couple of companies. And there are many, many, many things that are happening. Small time companies are acquired by large companies who are basically focusing on IoT. So investment by industry, if you see, uh, manufacturing is going to have a big investment Transportation and warehousing has a big investment. So these are all estimated number uh, BI intelligence that we have. So basically there are some industries which are wholesale, information industry, healthcare, utilities, mining. They are going to have a big time investment in this industry. So there is a lot of uh, development, testing work around this. So this is just an, in, a, in India, what are all the uh, split industry wise split in IoT uh, space healthcare 11% wearable device 9% consumer goods human automation home automation sorry education and security cloud platforms agriculture and dairy robotics so there are a lot of uh, implementation that is happening in India too with respect to IoT so ultimately growth sectors are healthcare infrastructure transportation smart grid smart cities and agriculture so areas of involvement by companies because all of us are sitting and listening about this where is the real job components r d manufacturing smart object design sensor is going sensor the organizations who are working on sensor for them big time work on developing sensors connectivity and networking of all the sensors and various things of devices integrating all of them Cloud and service provider, data analytics is going to be a big thing. Domain expertise, data processing. Uh, we need application developers who are going to uh, run these applications, partnerships, distribution, reselling. So ultimately, there is a demand for developers. So 300K developers are estimated by 2014 for, I, uh, for IoT. And by, two, by 2020, for IoT space, we may need about 4.5 million people who are required for IoT. So currently market is not uh, completely ready or market is yet to uh, take IoT in a big way. So this is the kind of requirement that is required for uh, uh, IoT market. So this is the last slide that talks about uh, what needs to be done uh, to make ha to have success in IoT. Basically. We need to take open systems and standards. We need to share and allow access to the data. 
we cannot keep it with us, redesign data management process. We, we need to have complete rethinking on our products uh, as services. Basically, we need to sell them like that, analyze data and derive insights and develop intelligence and finally ensure that security is not a threat. Take privacy and security seriously. So that's what uh, I have uh, for this demo session. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope uh, you have got some information and uh, I hope your Monday evening was uh, successful in learning something new.